hi and welcome back to the channel this is the sixth and last part in our series on fluid and hemodynamic disorders and this last part is about ischemia and infarction so what is ischemia ischemia is defined as deficient blood supply to part of tissue related to its needs so our ischemia is deficient blood supply to tissue related to its needs so the point to be noted here is related to its needs so here demand and supply is the matter so when our blood supply is not able to cater to the demand of that particular tissue then that is called ischemia okay now we know what is ischemia but what does this ischemia cause so what are the problems associated with this ischemia number one ischemia can lead to deficient supply of oxygen because obviously you know oxygen is carried by blood so it can lead to deficient supply of oxygen called hypoxia our nutrients nutrients are also carried through blood so it can lead to malnourishment and we know metabolic waste are also removed from the tissue by the blood or through the blood so it can lead to inadequate clearance or stagnation of metabolic waste in the tissue all these three are harmful coming to causes or etiology of ischemia the cause can be in the heart that is pump failure heart is the pump or motor which pumps blood to all parts of the body so when there is pump failure that is heart failure or inadequate cardiac output that can cause ischemia or the cause can be in the arteries and veins that is the pipeline arterial or venous obstruction can also cause ischemia or the cause can be in the microcirculation that is obstruction of capillaries now it's not like all ischemia cause ill effect the ill effects caused by ischemia depends upon certain factors the most important of that is the anatomic pattern of blood supply i am sure you are all thorough with anatomy by now so the effect of ischemia depends upon the anatomical pattern of blood supply to that particular tissue or organ if that particular organ or tissue is supplied by a single artery that is an end artery without any anastomosis then invariably ischemia leads to necrosis or death of that tissue example is central artery of retina any blockage in the central artery of retina will lead to blindness if the organ is supplied by a single artery but with rich anastomosis as in superior mesenteric artery supplying the small intestine or coronary artery system even if one artery is blocked the blood supply is re-established by bypassing that blockage due to the presence of this anastomosis in that case the chance for ill effects is less another pattern is parallel arterial supply example the blood supply of brain taken care of by circle of villis here more than one artery supplies the organ in a parallel fashion and so if occlusion of one artery occurs an alternative blood supply is maintained so in this case also the ill effect is less severe the last type is double blood supply as in lungs and liver lung is perfused by both bronchial circulation and also pulmonary arterial branches the same way liver has also dual supply that is from porta circulation and hepatic arterial circulation so here also chance for any ill effect if one artery is blocked is very rare apart from anatomical pattern the ill effect is also dependent upon the general 
and cardiovascular status or condition of the patient. It is also dependent upon the type of tissue affected. Some tissues are more resistant to the ill effects of ischemia while some other tissues are very vulnerable. For example, the cardiac tissue, the brain tissue, kidneys, these are very vulnerable. We saw that in our cell injury chapter also. These tissues uh, like the cardiac tissue, uh, brain tissue, they do not have the ability to switch to anaerobic glycolysis. So when the oxygen supply is cut off, they don't have any alternate pathway and so the ill effects are very severe. In the same way, the ill effects are dependent upon the rapidity of development of ischemia. That is, if the development of ischemia is sudden, then the ill effects are more pronounced. The reason is, the body or most tissues or organs in the body have the capacity to adjust themselves to adverse situations. So, if sufficient time is given, collateral circulation develops and the organ adapts to the new condition. But this development of collateral circulation needs one precious thing, that is time. So, if the development of ischemia is rapid, then the collateral circulation cannot develop and so the ill effects are more pronounced. Coming to the effects of ischemia, the spectrum of effect due to ischemia can range from no change, that is absolutely no change, absolute normalcy to sudden death. The spectrum includes both the extremes. So when, as we saw, the anatomical pattern of blood supply is favorable or there is sufficient for a time for uh, development of collateral circulation, pretty much there is no change or absolute normalcy is maintained in that condition. And if that is not the case, then ill effects do occur and that spectrum of ill effects can range from slight functional disturbances to even sudden death. Functional disturbances occur when the developed collateral channels or alternate blood supply is not able to maintain the blood supply when there is high demand. That is, the collateral channels provide adequate supply in normal condition, but when there is high demand or when there is exertion, they fail or they are unable to meet the demand. The classic case is angina pectoris. Angina pectoris is a condition where there is chest pain and other symptoms like breathlessness on exertion. From functional disturbances, the next stage is cellular changes. Here, mild reversible cellular changes like cloudy swelling, fatty change, etc. And the other extreme of the ill effect is sudden death, which can be due to myocardial or cerebral infarction. Which brings us to our next topic that is infarction. Infarction is the process of tissue necrosis, usually of coagulative type, resulting from ischemia. The area which has undergone necrosis is called infarct. The causes include interruption of arterial blood supply or venous obstruction or venous stagnation or even non-occlusive circulatory insufficiency that is just narrowing of the arteries not complete blockage but narrowing coming to the types they are classified according to various criteria depending upon the color they are classified as pale or white and red the pale type mostly occurs in compact organs and the red type mostly in soft loose tissues According to the age, they are classified as recent or fresh and old or healed. And according to the presence or absence of infection, they can be classified as bland or sterile and septic. Coming to the morphologic pictures, grossly, in compact or solid organs, the area of infarction is usually wedge-shaped with the apex pointing towards the occluded artery. You can see that here in the picture which shows infarcted kidney. The area of infarction is usually wedge shaped with the apex pointing towards the occluded artery 
and the base on the surface of the organ. The same way, the infarx due to arterial occlusion or usually pale and those due to venous obstruction or usually red and hemorrhagic. But anyways, even the red ones later on became pale when the red cells are lysed. The same way, the recent infarcts are generally slightly elevated over the surface while the old infarcts are shrunken and depressed. Microscopically, there is nothing special as we saw in the definition itself. In infarction, what we see is coagulative necrosis. What is coagulative necrosis? What is its microscopic feature? We already saw in our discussion on necrosis. The video is available in the channel. You can watch it. The unique feature of coagulative necrosis is the keyword is tombstone. That is the cells lose all their detail but the outline is maintained and the type of cell can be identified. That is called coagulative necrosis. So, in infarction, we see features of coagulative necrosis. The boundary of this necrosed area shows inflammatory reaction. Eventually, the necrosed area is replaced by fibrous scar and sometimes even calcification can occur. This is the case in most organs, but there is a difference in cerebrum or brain. Here, the necrosis is of liquefactive type, not coagulative. We saw that already in our necrosis chapter. Okay, so here in cerebrum, the necrosis is of liquefactive type and then the necrosed area is replaced by gliosis or replacement by microglial cells. Okay, so that's enough for our infarction. We will wind up this chapter that is fluid and hemodynamic disorders here. We will start a new chapter in our next video that is Neoplasia which is again an important chapter. As usual I have provided PDF notes. You can use it. The link is available in the description. If you need any further guidance or help you can mail me. And I can upload dubbed versions in native languages like Malayalam and Tamil if there is sufficient fans for that. So if you need such classes do let me know through the comment section. Okay that's all for today. Keep the channel subscribed and until we meet in another video, thanks for watching. Bye.